This video explains how to create an ordered factor in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. As a very first step in this tutorial, we need to create a factor vector, as you can see in lines two and three of the code. So after running these lines of code, you can see at the top right of R Studio that a new factor vector is appearing, which is called myFact. And we can print this vector to the bottom in the RStudio console. And then you can see that we have created a new factor object which contains the levels C, A and B. We can also check the class of our factor vector using the class function, as you can see in line six of the code. And then you can see that the class of our data object is the factor class. Now let's assume that we want to convert this factor object to an ordered factor. Then we can apply the ordered function as you can see in line eight of the code. And within this function, I'm simply specifying the name of our factor object, myFact, and then I'm storing the output of this in a new data object that I'm calling myFact ordered one. So if you run line eight of the code, you can see that this new data object is appearing at the top right, and we can print our new data object by running line nine of the code. And then you can see that the values in our data object are the same. However, this time we have specified a certain order of our levels because we have specified that the level C is smaller than the level A and the level A is smaller than the level B. We can also check the class of our updated data object by running line 11 of the code. And then you can see that our new data object is still a factor. However, it is an ordered factor. So in this first example, I have explained how to convert an unordered factor to an ordered factor. However, it's also possible to create an ordered factor, as I will show you in the next example, starting in line 13 of the code. So in lines 13 to 15 of the code, I'm using the factor function. And within this function, I'm specifying the levels of our factor and I'm also specifying the ordering of our factor. So in this case, I'm using the ordered argument and I'm setting this argument to be equal to true. And then I'm storing the output of the factor function in a new data object that I'm calling myFactOrdered2. So if you run lines 13 to 15 of the code, this data object is appearing at the top right and we can print our new data object by running line 16 of the code. And then you can see that we have created exactly the same ordered factor vector as in the previous example. However, this time we have constructed this ordered factor from scratch. As in the previous example, we can also use the class function to check the class of our new data object. And as you can see, the class is also the same as in the first example. So we have created an ordered factor. It's also possible to use the is.ordered function to check whether a factor vector is ordered. So let's apply this function to our unordered factor that we have created in the beginning of this tutorial. And then you can see that the RStudio console returns the logical indicator false because this data object is not ordered. And if we apply the isOrdered function to our ordered vector vector, the logical value true is returned because this data object is ordered. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.